Good everyone, I hope you have an amazing day. Um, so today I'll be talking about the debugging, uh, which is pretty interesting uh, topic in my opinion, uh, because as a developer, right, debugging plays a very important role in our day-to-day -day development activities, right? Because the things can go wrong uh, and we are not always aware of what's going on. So the, in that scenario, debugging plays a very crucial role to assist every developer to find out what's going on, right? Um, so the first thing I wanted to um, take you guys around the concept of the, the debug box, right? Which is very important. Um, so the so what I'm gonna do, I will talk about, um, you know, how to enable the debug mode for the lighting components. Um, so I'm gonna talk about some cache settings and I also talk about the Salesforce lighting inspect, inspector, which is a Chrome extension, right? Okay. So uh, first, I want to talk about from an Apex perspective, right? So you have an Apex code, right? So for instance, uh, let me go to developer console. Um, so I'll explain to you different modes, different things which you can do, right? So um, say for instance, this is a code, right? So I wanted to say uh, debug something uh, when I'm developing, right? I'm not talking about when you're in production. I'm just saying when you're debugging or or for that matter, right? Uh, we even talk about the production. Or we can go about, uh, you know, figuring out the issues that's happening there. Okay. So if you wanted to debug something, the first thing I can do, very basic, right? System dot debug, um, you know, test, you know, whatever, right? Um, which will actually debug your changes to, you know, the the debug box, right? Which I'll show you how you can enable it and how you can test it, right? Um, and another thing, uh, as a part of your code practice, you should always, always, you know, try to uh, put your code under try catch, right? So because that's one of the way uh, you can catch exception, and you can also do this, you know, system dot debug, you know, ex dot get message. You know, this is a very basic thing, right? The bare minimum, right? Which is like a must have. If you are not relying on any of the debug options, if you don't have a custom objects, right? So this is one thing, okay? Um, because I have seen code, right? I have seen code, say for instance, just a simple example, right? Count A equals to you know, select blah, blah, right? Uh, name from account side limit two. <laughs> you know, I've seen code like that. and. And sorry, not code like that. Sorry, limit one, and and then do you know blah blah blah. Other operation down, and in you know, another operation down, and nowhere try catch right. So if something goes wrong, right, where do you hook up? Where do you debug it, right? So that's it's a part of a uh, it's a part of a programming practice. First of all, right. I mean, I do not like first of all a code which does not contain try catch right or try finally. Because if you are doing a kind of a DML operation or a complex process, right, like looping through the list or map or, you know, uh, I expect your code to um, have try catch. But if you are having a code like, you know, say, you know, return, say, uh, you know, you have a method which returns just say one, right? There's no change. Then, yeah, you can forget about the try catch there. That's fine. You don't have to put it there. But if you have a complex operation, you should put the try catch, right? Now, if you don't have, say, for instance, any custom object, if you're not using any logging framework, right, then you can log into the debug logs. When you log into debug logs, it's going to be a nightmare, right? Because, uh, first of all, uh, you know, debug logs, right, it actually takes the space in your Salesforce work. So it's not a good practice to enable it constantly, right? You should only use debug logs when things go wrong, okay? Now, how do you go about uh, enabling it? It's pretty simple. So you go to the setup here. So if you do not know how to go to setup, so this is a Gecog icon, you go to setup here, it takes you here, right? And just go to debug, just type debug, um, sorry, debug, and let's go to debug logs, right? And you can create a log as a part of your user, you can create a new Right, and just uh, let me show one, right? So you can pretty much enable it. Let's say I wanted to activate it. Um, say for instance, let me, let's do one, right? I'll just show you once anyways. I'm just gonna do for today, and I'm just gonna do this for today, right? 
nine four uh let's say i just wanted to say um it's a 10 minutes long right so to save it okay now we got this there's no log here now what i'll do i'll just do an operation here or something all right account i'll just go open an account and just play around ping pong around here and there okay just open the tabork Oh, it's right okay so let's refresh it yeah you can see that a lot of different log files generated right you can look at it now this is not a great option every single time and i don't never encourage you to you know get crazy about it and just leave it on for a day right so because you should only enable um uh, the flag right for a very small amount of time and once you're done with it It's good practice to delete it right otherwise you chalk up the space for no reason So this is one thing okay, and another thing is that you might have a custom object in place Okay, so if you have a custom object in place, that's sweet You can always put your you know try catch Right so and when you have a try catch and then you know exception and you know ex and then you can always insert to the custom object right blah 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 now custom object you know you might have an existing one or if you don't have an existing one you're planning to create one you need to you know consult your architects or you know a lead developer to see if that's a good practice right because the object will take space right so you're inserting the record to a custom object you have to maintain about you got to think about the archival process right you can't have you know 10 years worth of data and it's extremely slow down the that object right so you have to uh keep the archival into consideration right if you're working for say insurance company they have compliance right so said data should be there for seven years or something so you know that's a different discussion altogether but i'm just saying right if you are planning to use a custom object for whatever reason right um, you have to have an arch archival in place, okay? Or you can use a framework. There's something called RFLib uh, framework, which is pretty cool. Uh, I would highly encourage you to check it out. RFLib logger framework. You can pretty much hook up that to your process builders, uh, to your flows. Uh, you can even do that to your, you know, LWC components, Apex, right? It's pretty handy, all right? Just have a look at it when you get a chance. Okay, so that's all from an Apex perspective, okay? Now, uh, that's pretty sweet now what happens from an LWC perspective from a lightning component perspective right so if you wanted to um, enable uh, you see one thing you just have to understand one thing right um, if you wanted to uh, enable the debug mode right you can do that right uh, who are actually if you wanted to debug a JavaScript which is pretty awesome you can do that um, uh, but the you have to understand that if you enable that for JavaScript, then Salesforce becomes slower, right? The performance is kind of big slower. That's why, you know, in production, it's kind of disabled. I mean, not disabled, but it's not enabled by default, okay? Um, so because in production, right, Salesforce have actually optimized the production environment for performance, okay? Um, so your framework code is optimized and minified as well to reduce the size of a JavaScript code. So that's one thing you have to understand. Keep in mind. Um, so, so because of that, what happens is right. The JavaScript code, right, what gets served to your browser, is uh, obfus obfuscated, right? I mean, there's a term I can't pronounce it very well. I write it down. Um, I know the meaning of it, but you know, this is a problem. And English is not your first language, right? But it's all good. Uh, was catered right um so that's fine um then you know say for instance if you wanted to debug you know the salesforce for whatever reason uh javascript that's cool let's let me show you how you can do that so you have to enable something so you go to debug mode yeah and so you just go here and let's say enabled and just enable it okay so that's pretty much you have to do the debug mode user so that will uh, take care of it. Um, yeah, so that's one way, right? You can, uh, but the remember that, right? So it's only used for debugging, right? Please do not keep it on in production. It, it will uh, 
impact the performance okay so pay attention to that then another thing you have to you can do something called you know cache setting during development so let me show you what I remember that so you go to um, you know session so you go to session settings right and um, if you go up there is something called where the heck is it um, somewhere enable okay this one right enable secure and persistent browser caching to improve the performance so if you if you wanted to you know in your development you can disable it right um, to see the effect of any code change uh, without needing to empty the cache so but you know but remember one thing right in production please do not do this so because it will have significant negative performance impact on lighting experience uh, so always keep it on in production okay just pay it is only if, if you are in a, in your developer box or you know scratch or in your sandbox if you wanted to um, test it then you can do that but in production it should be ticked okay so that's uh, one thing you can do right um, and there's something I wanted to talk about uh, called uh, the Google uh, you know sorry the Salesforce lightning inspector Chrome extension so this is something like uh, where is it somewhere so there is a lightning self for lightning Chrome extension this is what I've installed so you know it will actually um, you know gives you a lot of options um, you know when you wanted to uh, debug certain things I'll show you what I remember that it's pretty exciting I've used it so let's go to account right now, if you wanted to see the performance of an account, say for instance, um, you can view that. Say for instance, if you wanted to see how this is happening, what's going on behind the scene in the Lightning, right? So you can go to the uh, more tools. I'm using Chrome, right? You can use it Chrome, uh, you know, in different environment, right? I'm using uh, Ubuntu. You can use that in in uh, Windows, your favorite Windows. I hate Windows, to be honest. It sucks. I mean, sucks is an understatement, to be honest. Um, that's pretty... All right, so you go here, the lightning here, you see? I use that, and let's close this board here. Okay, let's go to performance here, right? It doesn't show anything, but let's go here <laughs> anyways. Um, might show something it might not show something all right you see now it shows the performance you can see the time it takes to do that and you can see the transaction here you know different transaction happening events uh, my favorites are actions so you can see you know things which is completed uh, pending there's nothing there and if you wanted to uh, get information about you know different things you can do that get record type for instance okay you open this right and you open this right and you can see this record and you can see here right and you can see the status here. if something goes wrong you can come in and look at it um, so this is you know about the actions and you can look at the storage you know you can pretty much have a look at it it's pretty handy right and um, then you event logs you know there's nothing here transactions like I said you can have a look at it and it's just a request you can even look at this one uh, performance right you can look at that component trees you know just drill gives you an idea about the component you know how it's everything is rendered behind the scene right I mean I uh, used you know it's like I said I use this one a lot but I wanted to debug my LWC component or aura component so this is pretty handy but this is you know something that's very cool as well right if you wanted to uh, inspect a certain elements or if you wanted to look at the performance, if you wanted to see what actions been uh, initiated behind the scene, and if you want to see uh, if your page is loading correctly, right? And if there are some issues, you can always go and investigate, right? So this is, these are the tools, right, which Salesforce offers you uh, for debugging, right? I hope I covered enough. Uh, you know, I don't really, you know, uh, want to, I don't really wanted to talk about different frameworks, right? That's why I only mentioned just one because you know 
you have to go and figure out right if you're really into framework because that's really not the scope of this certification series uh so what we're going to do next time right i'm going to go through the there are a few sample questions uh salesforce gives you you might get asked from that question right one or two might get repeated so which is so it's like uh, you know salesforce pdf you know which has uh different four or five sample questions so that you get a glimpse of what you can expect so we can talk about that in the next episode right so that's pretty much i wanted to talk about guys i hope you guys have an amazing uh saturday adios